in the beginning when I first put them on, it took me two and a half hours to put them on. And now it's, I'm down to about 45 minutes. They're quite easy, actually. Everybody will ask some of these comments I get with people with tracks are they're very high maintenance, but they're actually not. You tighten them up once and once you're stretched, it's simple. If you change your wheel, it's simple. You've got your sliders and that sort of thing, but honestly, it's, they're, they're not that bad. And I've never had any issue with them. You just got to be more mindful of what you're doing. And if you're going to a, a place, for example, that you're not totally familiar with the train, I just go super slow. I'm not interested in breaking anything. Warning. The 4 Before Canada podcast contains discussion about exploring mountains, camping beside lakes, and enjoying the outdoors. Guests also talk about jumping race trucks side by side, racing 1,000 horsepower rigs across mud pits, and jumping monster trucks over stacks of buses. None of this is for the faint of heart. The 4 Before Canada podcast is not responsible for bringing out your inner adrenaline junkie or making you want to get out there and explore the back roads from coast to coast. The 4 Before Canada podcast is not responsible for broken parts due to jumping your vehicle, hitting mud poles too hard, crossing deep streams, and doing other dumb shit. However, we will take credit for inspiring you to explore mountaintops, spend quality time outdoors with your friends, or meeting new like-minded people, and most importantly of all, following your dreams. Hey everybody, welcome to the 4 Before Canada podcast. I'm your host, West. And I'm your And I'm Nick Rees Dwayne, and I'm from Just Keeping Adventures. Awesome. Once again, I am your host, Wes. I don't know why I always say West when I'm recording, but oh, it is what it is. That's what blooper reels are made for. Trisha and I have a whole bunch of bloopers to come out here pretty quick. So <laughs> as I'm sure you probably do as well, Dwayne. Oh, you always. <laughs> I think about my bloopers in my video sometimes, but my wife's not, you're not putting that in there. I usually leave them in there just to give people a chuckle. And I've had a couple of people comment a few times. It's like, why do you call yourself West? Or Trisha's answering the phone. So yeah. You've had a couple like that. So I've had a couple of people yeah. comment on them. So at least people are paying attention. So that's good. <laughs> exactly. So once again, we're with Dwayne from Just Jeeping Adventures. You can check him out on YouTube, Instagram. We really want to get into it. We'll talk to him in a second. This is his second trip back for the uh, podcast. We had him back in February and a lot has to happen since then including tracks. This episode's all about tracks. So before we hop into that, I want to mention to, to everybody listening, we got some really interesting guests coming up. If you're into the off-road racing, we've got Nicole McCrossin coming up. She's a third generation off-road racer out of Ontario. She's racing a 80s Bronco and we're trying to work out a schedule with her and get her on board. And I know Tresha, you're going to love that episode. So that's in the works as well. We've got Kyle Walton coming up from the Axle Busters, a group out of Alberta. And these guys are running the big 52s and 56 inch tall tires and 2000 horsepower, 3500 horsepower. And they're off road racing with these mo basically monster trucks. And there's a few events in Alberta that they tend, quite a few down in Montana and that. And so Kyle's going to be coming on in the next couple of weeks. And Really looking forward to that because anytime you're talking about horsepower and mud and it's, it's going to be exciting. We got the guys from Overland North coming up soon. They've got their freeze your balls off event coming up in February there. I can't remember the official term, guys. Sorry about that. So I don't know if you heard about this, Wayne, but the guys from Overland North in Ontario, they got three events, the Overland Expo style events, and okay. one of them is in February at the true Canadian Overland Expo event. And so and that hope, it is in Ontario in February. A little um, bit of a drive. We a little bit it. of a drive. But it's, it's a cool event. Last year is the first year for it. And everybody had so much fun. It wasn't minus 30 or anything like that. It was you know, a couple minus 10 or something like in that area. So it's, you can deal with it. But yeah, it's, they're the first ones to do a winter event like that. And they had quite a few people come out. They had 40 rigs or something come out. Wow. So yeah, good. it was pretty cool pretty cool so once again we're talking to Dwayne from just jeeping adventures uh, as i mentioned earlier Dwayne's on the show back in february we talked about your four wheeling adventures your incredible camp cooking and of course your videos on youtube and instagram as just jeeping adventures people still comment about the 
cinnamon bun or pancakes. Maybe it's just me that's always bringing it up with everybody because I'm <laughs> infatuated with these things. I talked to you before. I hate pancakes and I actually eat oh, those. They don't really taste we, like pancakes. So it was funny. We had somebody deliver some baking at Christmas to work and oh. there's cinnamon buns in there. And I'm like, that just totally reminded me of your pancakes. And I'm like, okay, we got to make it happen this year. You and I are so close, right? We're what, three hours away. So we do have to get together this summer. So I do plan on doing more trips this summer. Unless you do winter camping. You know what? Last weekend was my first time winter camping. So really? It, yeah. It wasn't too bad. It was still fairly warm out, right? Like it only got down to minus four, minus five at night. So I actually had to turn my diesel heater off. I was so warm inside the tent, but. Which tent? Do I don't, with? I've got a tree line tent oh, yeah. with a Vever heater. Okay. And which and it seemed, seemed to work out well, right? But I'm not into the winter wheeling and winter camping as much as you are because I don't have tracks. I went before tracks. It's just better now. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so let's just hop right into that tracks. Dwayne, you're pretty much the first guy in BC to be running tracks on your Jeep. And other than it, just the fact that it's awesome, why? Why? Wait, so the, <laughs> the story comes out. So last year, or just after I spoke to you, I believe, I was out with my wife and we were heading to Penticton, which is about a four hour drive roughly from where I am. And we always go winter camp. We had our diesel heater set up. I didn't have the kitchen or anything in the Jeep at that time, but I have everything set up and going out, we were all prepared. And I brought my change with me at the time and I didn't really know any better. And I, they worked for a little bit and about I don't know, 10 kilometers in, it would get deeper. And, but I pushed the head because I thought, you know what? There's a lake coming up. But let's fast forward for a second. In the summer, I went to look at that same spot and I would have never made it to the lake. So it was so far away. But anyway, <laughs> back to my story, I basically pushed, push, and I eventually got stuck and stuck, winched, rear winch, front winch, back and forth. And then I had the lockers on. I was just going super slow. And I heard a bang. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I knew it wasn't going to be whipped. I went to back off and I couldn't. And uh, my wife got out of the out of the Jeep and she says, the tire doesn't look like it's in the right spot. And I'm like, what do you mean? So like, it's not moving. I said, okay. I backed off. She said, no, it's hitting the bumper. I'm like, oh my gosh, I broke an axle. So, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to get out. And I'm a pretty mechanically inclined. I could do a lot of my own work, but I tell you, I got out and God love her. She says, babe, you can fix this. You got all the tools. I'm like, mm, I'm not fixing this one. So I actually busted the hub. And I don't know if you guys know this, but on the gas Jeeps, all of the hubs are aluminum. I don't know why they do that. On the Mojave's and the diesels, they're steel. Did you know that? Really? I did yeah. not. Oh, the hub busted. And then that broke my axle and then the whole wheel, if I didn't have the steering attached to it, it would have just fallen off on the ground. So I, and long story short, it, it broke it, I ended up camping out, just freaking out. And I thought, you know what? Thank gosh I bought a Garmin inReach because I only bought it a week ago, a week pre previous to this. Because two, two weeks prior to that, we were in that same spot and I got stuck. No change, other, just out wheeling around for a couple hours and turned into eight and I got stuck. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to call my buddy with a snowmobile. And he came up and then brought her down. And that's where he made a post on the BC recovery. And that's where I met Luke. But okay. we did camp out for a couple of days and she was freaking out. Even though it looked like she was calm on camera, she wasn't. She had a little bit of anxiety about it, but 14 kilometers, not that far. But if you think about it, but if you're in the winter in some below temperatures, it's not good. We did have a heater and all that. Wasn't worried about it, but just the fact that she's worried about leaving the Jeep there. And I said, don't worry about that. We'll get it out. And that's my story. And ever, ever since that, I'm never do so willing again, she says. So I said, okay, that's fine. I thought, you know what? I'm going to start looking online. I've been wanting tracks for a couple of years, but they are a little bit pricey. And I said, you know what? Let's think about it. And she said, okay, let's do tracks then but I'm still not going out. I'm like, oh, okay, let's not be conducive to what I want to do. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out a couple of times on my own with a buddy and just test them out, get to know the 
the ins and outs of how you use them and stuff like that. Because there is a little bit of driving technique to drive with them. And after that, she went out with me and she loves it. And that's the reason why I bought Quacks. That's a great story because there's a lot of people that would have, even with the tracks, would have said no. So the fact that after you got used to it with tracks that she's coming out and joining you, that's great. Now, you did mention that the tracks is a bit of a different driving technique. H- how is it driving with the tracks, say, to a vehicle where you're running up 35s or 37s? Okay, so this is a couple of things about tracks. I, I don't know if you're familiar with but They have what they call the limiting straps. All, all of all their chains, they're actually, the people call them straps, but that yeah. prevents the triangle from, from trying to completely flip over. And that's happened to many people, but they don't run the limiters. And that prevents it from flipping over because sometimes the best way I could describe it is if you go into a creek, I went into a creek last week and I was letting my buddy drive and he's, Hey, your front track wants to flip. I'm like, let me go and look at it. I drove, I just had to angle the, the uh, tracks a certain way and to go over or I could have put a max tracks. They're really meant for deep snow, not a large, like what I call whoops, the dig outs and they're not designed for that on, on a crazy flex you can, but. I've ripped off two of my fenders doing that. I've got the factory fenders. I like that look or they yeah, do for anyone, sure. but they do catch on them. But there is a little bit of driving for that. The steering, if you want to do a basic turnaround, you're doing like a 30 point turn. And the best way to describe it is if I'm backing up and I want to turn a certain way, just before I'm ready to turn, I'm almost finished at my, where I can go back as far as I can go. I already start turning the opposite way. So it gives me a head start for going the other way because you can't turn. The steering is next to impossible. So my next upgrade, which I say I'm not going to do, it's I need to do the PSD steering. I was wondering about that, how difficult it is to steer. Um, oh, it's fine visit. drive. It's completely fine okay. drive. It's only when you're stopped. So you have to be moving in order to, uh, to turn. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So maybe if you can explain to our listeners how the tracks work, like, it's not like you're just throwing them on your tire and they're going, going on. You take your tire off and then there's an assembly that gets bolted to the axle shaft or where your tire normally goes, right? Maybe right. if you can explain how that looks and how that all comes together. Some tracks are different. Some don't require spacers and some do, but mine, I have spacers on mine. They're about three inches. Mm-hmm. Take the tire off. I put the hub on it, which is a six lug as opposed to a five on the Jeep. And then I, I torque those down, they're 135 foot pounds. And then I put the track onto that at 100 foot pounds. And then once those on, I put the limiting straps on, which there's two, there, there's mounting points. You have to buy, a, uh, it, it doesn't come with the tracks. You have to buy it separately, which I'd highly recommend doing. And yeah, you need to put those on. And that's a, a, probably about 45 minutes with my wife helping me is, to do the track, it's not even a big deal. The longest part, honestly, it's just the putting the adapters on because, and I, I had to buy a different jack because once I jack it up, I used to have a one of those snap on one ton, but that stopped working real fast because not designed for that. So I now picked up a, one of those caterpillar jacks recently. Yep. And it's like a game changer. So I just jacked that up. And while I'm doing spacer, she'll be putting the tire in the back of the trailer. Cause I, I told my tracks, right? Yeah, I noticed that you've got a little uh, enclosed trailer that you put the tracks on. That does go. My next question says, how do you get those tracks to the trail? But I did see that you have a trailer for that. Yeah, so I, I just bought a small one because I, I wanted something that could be not too heavy for my Jeep because mm-hmm. the Jeep's already heavy as it is. So it's just a five by eight trailer enclosed. So I have a GPS on it and it's got locks on the wheels, always on the doors, and one for the trailer hitch. So if someone decides to steal it, I'll just go visit at their door. <laughs> So, but yeah. So the other thing about tracks is I'll always get a question of, they've only been out maybe eight, seven, eight times now. And I would get people saying, man, they don't back up very well. What most people don't know this, but the tracks are actually directional. So when you back up, they don't, they will back up no problem in snow, but not nearly as good as it would going forward. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't yeah. realize they're directional. So yeah. you mentioned weight. What do these weigh compared to say your average tire? Oh, a lot. They're 190 pounds each. So a yeah, bit of, are, are, 
I guess once you when you're putting them on, you're in the snow anyway, so it's probably a little easier to move them around. Well, they just they just roll them just like a tire. It's very okay. easy. And when I jack it off, I just line it up perfectly, and then I just slide them right over the lugs. I yeah. don't have to lift them or anything, right? I do less least lifting as possible. In the beginning, when I first put them on, it took me two and a half hours to put them on. And now it's I'm down to about forty five minutes, which is not bad actually. Yeah. Then, practice makes perfect, right? Yeah. And then the other thing about the tracks, a lot of people will ask, and this is so common, hey, can you drive this on the highway? And the answer is, would you drive a snowmobile on the highway? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. So it's basically a, a snowmobile on a Jeep form, basically. Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to go on crazy trails like those guys, but I'm in the warmth of my Jeep. And the other thing is the bogey wheels, you bring a few extras. If the snow is not deep enough, and you hit something, we're going to bend the wheel. They're designed to, to do that, but so you don't have to break anything else. So the wheels are pretty easy. It's a 19 millimeter socket. It takes two minutes to change a little bogey wheel, unless you have to rob it from the inside or something like that, which I've done. I didn't have any extra wheels at the time. So now I have a bunch of extra ones just in case, but that was only when the snow wasn't really that. So if you're going out, you're going through these tight trails, you really need to watch out for their stumps and that sort of thing. Right. Thanks. So for our listeners, a bogey wheel, is that like one of those idler wheels or? Yes. I call them bogey wheel, but yes, idler yeah. wheels. Yeah. Okay. There's 24 gotcha. of them total. Per track or for yeah. all vehicle? Yeah. No. For each track. Oh, wow. Okay. That's I didn't realize there's that many of them on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like little mini caterpillars or, or large. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're, they're quite easy, actually. Everybody will ask. When I see somebody, when I was doing these, because I, I do a little bit of searching and for different content, give me different ideas and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I looked at these, some of these comments I get with people with tracks are they're very high maintenance, but they're actually not. You tighten them up once and once you're stretched, it's simple. If you change your wheel, it's simple. You've got your sliders and that sort of thing, but honestly, it's, they're, they're not that bad and I've never had any issue with them. And I've been out, I know a couple of other locals have them too. and I've been out the most and I have zero issues with mine. You just got to be more mindful of what you're doing. And if you're going to a, a place, for example, that you're not totally familiar with the train, I just go super slow. I'm not interested in breaking anything. Does it drive much different when you're in, say, a tighter trail? Is there more of a, not necessarily binding, but if you're trying to turn a tight corner in a tight trail, do you notice much of a different or do you try and avoid those kinds of trails? No, the, the, it, it drives fine. Like I said, only when you're really stopped, okay. that's an issue. Yeah. If you're moving even 10 kilometers an hour, they turn fine. Yeah. It's just the factory steering is okay, but if I upgraded that steering box, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier, but it's you know one of my many mods I'd still got to do. <laughs> it never ends, right? <laughs> that's a fact. So, yeah. I think we've all got a big list of mods to do, so <laughs> we all understand that one. 45 minutes to install. That's not bad. 45 minutes to get off. That's reasonable as well, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Half the time, by the time we air up, you're standing around for a half hour anyways. So it's True. not that much more than that. So just a bit more physical. Do they stick out much wider than your than the tires that you have on there? Eight inches total for each side. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah. So, so not much wider than your than your regular tires. If any, uh, they're four inches wider than my tires would be. Oh, four inch wider than my tires. Back. Okay. It might already stick out a little bit. Nothing crazy, yeah. but yeah, because it's basically I'm trying to think here. Yeah, about four inches on each each corner. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the different snows. You've been out quite a bit, and I know that you've had some differences in the snows. Do you notice a big difference when you're out there on a wet snow versus a dry powder kind of idea? Actually, I have not hit any wet snow yet. And I, I'll be oh. curious how that does. I, I've been out quite a bit, but I've never hit anything wet. But I will say that harder to pack the snow, the rougher the Jeep rides. And obviously, even nice suspension, soft as it can be, it's almost like you're riding in a tank. It's a lot of vibration. So I try to avoid hard pack snow, like an FSR, for example. I don't yeah. change everything out in deep snow because I don't want to do that. Uh, although I did bring a shovel in case I need to, but I just put it in the trailer. But I usually change it in a spot that's obviously flat. 
and then yeah. uh, right off the FSR. And sometimes FSRs are not friendly to the tracks. There's snow on them, but I'll usually go pretty slow, like 15 kilometers an hour. So it'll take me a while to get to it. So I don't want my Jeep vibrating to pieces. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So you said they're four inches wide. How, because I've been watching your videos, how... I guess the length is the whole track triangle when you're looking at it face on. Oh, it's five feet, five feet long. Five feet long. Yeah. Just, just try a five and they're 15 inches wide. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They do make sizes. Actually, I should say that they do make two sizes. Uh, I bought the longer ones because the Jeep's heavier and I don't want to be stuck all the time because it, it's mm -hmm. it, not. The best way I can put it is if you're a small snowshoe or a large snowshoe, it's obviously going to do better, right? I recommended that too, because the Jeep is so heavy. I'm at 6,600 pounds loaded with two people. Probably going to be a little bit heavier than that when I add a bigger tank. Less likely to get stuck. I haven't gotten stuck yet, but let's hope I don't. Yeah, that makes it fun. Yeah. The problem, <laughs> is, you know, the problem is if you get stuck in the track Jeep from, I'm just theorizing here. I would think it's going to be a lot harder to get out because I've got a 10 dollar my wind, but I think I'd have to like double snatch it and have, I'd probably have some issues with it. Let's hope I don't think. I would think so. So speaking of getting stuck, I know that you've been out and rescuing a few people that are stuck out in the snow with your <laughs> track Jeep, basically going out up under the whipsaw and stuff like that. What can you tell us about those trials and tribulations for those? That's an interesting one. Okay. So that's the two and a half hour that took me to put the tr tracks on the first time. <laughs> so, Cause so Luke is the guy that rescued me in the monster truck on 58. He uh, was going out there and he figured it's going to be about three hours to go there. And the guys were at Memorial Rock, which is not quite halfway close. And uh, they were coming from the other side of Lodestone. And I don't know if you know this trail, Trisha, but it's a pretty well-known trail in BC. And it's, I would say, impassable in the winter unless, well, I'd like to find out if it's not, but we got another guy locally here that has tracks with me too, because I convinced him to buy some. Now he's got tracks, but he's only been a bit from, but I think my experience with that is I, I met Luke and then I chatted with him on the phone. I said, look, come out and help. And he wasn't sure how the track jeep would do and he was worried he didn't say this but i guess he didn't really want to take a chance on me helping him and then having to rescue me again but we went out there and he went ahead and he started towing people out and i ended up helping him i don't know if you saw the video where he was pulling uh, a truck up and i was pulling a couple up i don't normally pull two vehicles like that i just want to see what i can do and i did find out the cat tracks will skip the sprocket he put lots of load on them and that was the first time I put them on. So they stretched a bit, which is normal. But after that trip, I don't mind giving someone a little quick tug something, but I'd rather just use a winch because I'm not interested in stretching my tracks so much that I got to buy new tracks for. Because they're like, I think they're like seven fifty dollars uh, a track, right? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the, I, I've known people that have the tracks for almost five seasons on the same bogey wheels. But they're obviously not out in super tight trails that are like we have. That's like back east stuff. Like I'm talking like Nova Scotia, that type of thing. Yeah. That's where actually the company is from. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I helped those guys out and they were really grateful. And I helped them out just because, you know what? I've been in that situation and I wanted to test out my track. So I thought I'm just going to head out there. It was about, I don't know, three and a half hours or so drive and then two and a half hours to put them on. And we didn't get out, out of the bush until probably <laughs> one one thirty in the morning. Wow. But it was a good event. And you know what? Everybody was super happy. And my main thing was for me is they want to give me a couple of bucks for gas, which is fine. But I, I didn't do it for that. I just want to go out and try it out. And I, like I said, I've been in that situation. So I know exactly what it's like. And two Toyotas have broken differentials and one uh, XJ had, I think it was a U-joint or something like that. It was on three wheel yeah. drive. But yeah, it was, it was quite an experience. I got to learn a lot about the tracks that day. And it's back, I didn't really know at the time, but when I got back, I'm like, oh, I, I bent like six wheels. And this, this company that I had the tracks on, he sent me a bunch and he said, don't worry about it. And I'm still new to it. I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. 
One, one thing we should mm-hmm. mention is the BC 4 before Recovery Group on Facebook is a excellent resource for if you do happen to be stuck out there, whether it be summer, spring, whatever, it is a great resource. And I know so many people have been helped out and rescued through that. There's other little local ones. I think there's a Camloops one. And also in, in Ontario, the Trillium. Yeah, what? What? They have, it's called Trillium, T-R-I-L-I-U-M in Ontario. And oh. I think they started with quads again and they've moved into 4 by 4s and they rescue tractors. It, it's really interesting following them on Instagram and Facebook and they do all kinds of recoveries. Same idea as the BC 4 by 4 and all the way to the place. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They're rescuing tractors in the mud and stuff like that oh. as well. Hey, Dwayne, did you ever see, there's a, it's a little bit off topic, but there was a yellow Ford Bronco that took a drink in one of the creeks in Ontario in the oh. springtime, I think it was. And he basically going over a bridge and it's kind of a oh. rickety bridge. We can see that. And, or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it fell off the bridge or the bridge collapsed and ended up down in there. And uh, so that, that's the kind of, they do a lot of regular rescues, but they also do a lot with that oh, too, yeah, right? Ford was written off. I think they, I can't remember. I do, I did f- follow on a couple other videos after, but I don't know if they ever ended up writing that one off or not. I can't remember. Oh. The post on the Facebook does say, I just can't remember top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember offhand, but yeah, that's quite the rescue mission on that one. They're having to dive under the water and it was pretty that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But just- yes, it, wherever you guys are, whether that's all I can say is join up. And if there's Hub City Overlanding out on the East Coast, great good bunch of guys there as well. Trailing off road in Ontario, BC, 4 before recovery. <laughs> Whether you join up and you need to be rescued or if you go out and help somebody, it's just about their helping people because we've all been stuck. We've all had to make that mom, I'm stuck phone call to the friends oh, yeah. and <laughs> stuff like that. I just, I truly believe like you in giving back to the community in that way. Oh, it, exactly. Uh, yeah. D- definitely a great feeling for sure. So. I love it. You know what? This whole thing with the trucks is just, I love winter camping. I think you probably know that already, but yeah. now that I've got my setup more simple, because you don't have to worry about getting you know, stuck. I wouldn't say I wouldn't worry about getting stuck because there is possibilities. Just getting out there and setting up my setup is five minutes now, I slide the kitchen out. I, yeah. my heater, I don't know if I told you this, Wes, but my heater set up right now, I have a red arc system in the Jeep and I basically, I drill two high, holes on the side of the Jeep, has quick connects in them. So I mount my heater to the side. I plug it into the side of the Jeep, which is already pre-wired inside the red arc. So when I'm at camp, all I do is open up my tent, press a button and the heat comes on. Nice. Yeah. Last time you had uh, just added the piece onto the side so you can put the the uh, heater on the outside of the vehicles yeah yeah last time so you've done some changes since then so like i say i did my first bit of winter camping last weekend and i didn't mind it it was uh, not as bad as what i thought it would be and i actually say i had to actually turn my heater off part way through the night because it's getting too hot so oh, yeah those heaters work so awesome so we were out uh, about two weekends ago i think we we're the one with excuse me with the Extreme winter cabin video was yep. minus 15. Yep. The, the weekend prior, I put my tent closed with snow. Stupid me. I should have dried it out. Went yep. to go open it. And then all of a sudden I couldn't, it was frozen solid. So <laughs> I think, oh, it's a good half an hour until I get that open. And she's pretty happy. She's pretty happy. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. But I'm smart because the previous to that, I had some issues. So I thought, you want? I'm going to bring my heat gun with me because I have a plug in the Red Arc system. So I got the heat gun and I started melting everything over my heat gun because I have an inverter. And then I opened it up and then I couldn't get to freaking do the ladder now. The ladder was frozen solid inside too. So I could do that. I was good half an hour trying to get everything done. But once I got everything set with the heater and everything, minus 15, I had it on a fly for probably about two hours just because it was was gap and it was, everything was wet inside, right? Yeah. And yeah, when I yeah. went to bed, finally, I had to turn it way down because it was way too, I'm at two kilowatt heat hours. It's not a big tent, but it's super cozy. Probably 20 plus degrees in my tent, even on a low. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was super impressed. I'm lying there on top of my sleeping bag with my long johns on and I'm like, 
this is just incredible. But I did the same thing in the morning. I had some moisture on the tent, on the fly and stuff like that. So I did crank it up in the morning to try and dry out as much as I could. And then I did do a little bit with the hose on the fly and that just to try and dry that out a little bit. So yeah, if you've got to open it next time, it's, it'll be like me. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah. yeah, I did have problems. I've, I've got my wire running right to the battery and it goes out the back of the hood. So I've got to open up the hood to put the roll of wire back in or, or disconnect it right from the quick connect. And I couldn't get my hood open because it frozen shut during the night. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so learning right. But yeah, I am really enjoying the coverage you're doing with the tracks. I know both Trisha and I have been talking about it off air quite a bit. It's, okay, we got to get Dwayne on because you're just loving the the videos that, that you are doing with it. You got any big plans coming up in the next couple months here for some winter wheeling? I've got another guy, Kyle, he, one I come in yep. to get tracks. He, he's had a couple of issues with his uh, axle or something and uh, bent a axle, no, not, not just the shaft, the axle housing is what he bent. Now Ooh. it's, but now it's fixed. He's been waiting for over, you know, a couple of months. So it's now a fix, but I'm going away on vacation next week for two weeks. After I get back, there's an abundance of snow and then we're going to do some alpine stuff. That's our plan. Yeah. Something that a little bit unorthodox and two track teeps are obviously better than one. If yep. someone wants to veer off and try something and you get stuck, at least you have another Jeep to back it up and not have to worry yep. about it, right? Especially if you're in uncharted territory in the snow. Yeah. Like, that's the one thing that with myself, I've only got like my Tacoma, I've got 33s on it. So. I don't venture into a lot of the deep stuff that my friends with 40s and that do. But so that's why I don't do a lot of winter wheeling. But I can understand doing more of it if you've got a setup like yours for sure. Oh, I love it. I can't even describe it. When I, and I, I say this in the nicest way, but when I was out and everybody's out winching and shoveling, and this is why I bought tracks. <laughs> and not that I don't like, I, I won't go in tires. With snow wheeling, I, I just, now that I have tracks, why would I want to do that? I, obviously, it's got to be deep enough snow. And you know what, making her happy, it's good because we could just do some filming, show her adventure, show her cooking, which we haven't done a lot of cooking because I've got the propane out of my last video, remember? So, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and so, you know what, she, she wasn't even mad. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> we had a couple, I so, a couple of different ones. So speaking of propane, what are you doing to keep that propane warm in the wintertime? Because it gets quite frosty even when it's just cool. So I imagine that in the real deeper temperatures. I, I was just going to say, I was joking about it, Clint. I'm praying that it's... Hey, I have a heat gun, remember? So, That's true. Yeah. Just hit it with the torch, right? Warm it up. <laughs> you know what? There's a couple of things I, I, I'm planning. I haven't done it yet. So when I go away, I'm going to give my buddy Frankenstein speed of my Jeep, and he's going to redo some of the Red Arc stuff. So right now, I, on the back of the inverter, there's two plugs only. So I pl plug one power bar in it, and I just bring that to the back of the Jeep, and where the back seat used to be. And I'm going to mount that to the side, and I've got five different plugs, a couple of USBs, and do it. I'm going to do a full walk around when this is done, because I haven't done it just because I want this to be super tidy. And, yeah. but anyway, one of my plan was to wire the into the red arc and then wire the, some type of like, on my, one of my bikes, are you familiar with nitrous bottles, that, that, that sort of thing? So yeah. I have a bottle heater for the nitrous bottle on it. And I'm going to get something like that wraps around the propane tank and yeah. maybe even on to the water tank up top. Cause I can't put water up top and it, it's just going to freeze. So I just take a bunch of water in the coolers right now. I turn the coolers off at night. Minus 15, you don't need to cool them off. <laughs> and I don't even care if it's colder than that. I just want to make sure that you're dressed for it. That's all you got to worry about, really. But that was one of my other questions, too. Obviously, you don't spend all your time in the Jeep and not all your time in the tent. What are you doing for those colder temperatures, minus 15 in that? Myself, I'm thinking layering up long johns and wool socks and go from there. Is there any little secrets you got for those? I've got two this is the thing when you're out playing around in the snow and you're whether you're helping someone winch or gathering firewood or whatever sometimes your gloves get wet and i used to put them on the dash to dry over time but i brought a spare set of gloves and Santa just brought me some new gloves that are heated so i use those for around the campfire they're on three you have these three different settings i forget yep. the brand but 
they work really well. I've tried them out uh, twice now, but I use my main gloves for outside and then I bring spare gloves. Always bring spare gloves, always bring spare socks, that sort of thing, just in case. I just wear a good set of snow pants. I used to have a different ones. The wife didn't like them. She just bought me some black ones this time. So I'm trying to, she's trying to dress me out. <laughs> Man, well, uh, I need all the help I can get with that. <laughs> and then there's, you know what? I have a new coat. It's a North Face. I'm not a super fan. It's okay. But I noticed that might sound a bit extreme, but I like the North Face onesie. You ever see those? They're extreme condition. Ones are minus 60 degrees. They use them on Mount Everest. That's the kind of suit they wear. And it is a onesie. It's got a little flap in the back if you got to do your deed. But it's minus 60. I don't think I need it for there, but my plan for the future is I'd like to go to Alaska and take the trucks and go up that way. I think it'd be awesome. That would be cool for sure. I was like, what would be your adventure that you want to take those trucks would be? So Alaska. Okay. Yeah. La- oh, I, I, you know what? Alaska, the only thing that scares me about Alaska, and I know people say, oh, it'll never happen, is the wildlife there. And I'm an avid gun person and i don't know what it would require to bring something over there that's something i have to look into but i'd like to have something with me if you're out in the bush like that because there's a lot of stuff you don't see online that that does happen you see it on the news and people getting attacked by bears and stuff like that but i don't know if you heard of one recently it was in was it in alberta was it can't remember yeah it was they but they had food in their tent it was a starving bear and they unloaded two bottles of bear spray and they still died, both yeah. of them. And I think if you had a firearm, they would still be around. Yeah. I don't have them for any other reason other than I br- always bring them with me when I'm out in the bush, just for protection. You just never know, right? Yeah, I think you're right. My guys is a different game for wildlife. So, Alaska, yeah. Alaska, I watch a lot of stuff and I probably shouldn't watch half the stuff I do because bear attacks and this and that. But when I see people with a bear spray, and it's probably okay. And some people listening to this podcast might say, ah, he's overreacting. And maybe I am. I'm a firm believer and I use this saying all the time is I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I agree with you that. And I think a big thing too is knowing how to use it. And you could read the instructions all you want, but if you actually don't try it before you actually need to, because a lot of times panic mode can set in. And we had a good shot about this on the weekend here when, when I was camping. And as was the with Clayton and Stephanie from Skyward Overland and Ryan Van Veen and a few other people. And we're looking at the element fire extinguisher and because they wanted to know how it worked and stuff like that. We did a recent podcast about it. And that's one thing is that we're talking with. Yeah, you got to make sure that how do you use you pull the caps, you strike it, and you're good to go. But in when panic mode sets, it may take a couple of times to strike it because you're in full panic. And that's where they talk about bear spray as well. Ryan is saying everybody should try their bear spray before they actually need it because hundred percent. Oh, it's the same thing. There's the elements you. I have those little fire extinguishers, mm-hmm. and I've used one of them just to test it out, and they're not that easy. They do start. But like you said, you're focused on it. But if you're in panic mode, that might be a different story. And exactly. Like said, same with the air spray, right? You should know it inside out. And it's no different with the firearm either. If you're not used to it, you don't shoot it enough. I use it to bring a pump with me, but there's other ones you can take through. You don't have to worry about it. If something's coming at you, you're going to be in total panic mode. Especially if you got a 400 pound beer going at you. <laughs> we can even take that farther too, right? How many people have winches in front of the vehicle and they haven't used it until they actually need to, right? So that's another thing that you should go out and just hook up to a tree or something like that and just see how it reacts, how it works. You know what? I you mean, just you made know. me think of something. This, so this is my ritual is every time I get out and as soon as I get ready to put the tracks on or even without the tracks, by putting my front and rear winches on, no matter what front winch stays on, but as soon as I put them on, I always get the both remotes and I test them out before I leave. Just in case, because you never know. If you imagine I'm out in the track jeep and I'm stuck in the snow and my winch don't work, that would be bad. And I wouldn't leave unless I had the winches working, especially going solo. Yeah. I've been there. I, I plugged it in and click and nothing. And it's, that's the worst time to find out that it doesn't work. No, that's a big bowl of note for me. But you know what? And keep it in contact since last year. I, I added a Starlink too, because we have a small business. And I thought, 
you know what, the keep in touch with the store, but also it's nice to be able to keep in touch with the reality a little bit here and there. I like to do my stories yep. onto my Instagram and promoting it and stuff like that and have a bit of fun. Yeah. It's growing pretty good actually considering. Yes. I saw that Warren had shared one of your videos a while ago, Warren Industries. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah Warren is on board with helping me right now. I'm not a, an actually an official sponsor or I wasn't. And because they asked me to come down to Moab last year because of my, my custom turned out winch in the back. That I had yeah. modified. And then I ended up get the, they, they reached out to me whenever that video was a month ago. And then all of a sudden they, they said to me, he's like, Hey, do you, do, do you uh, need anything? I'm like, no, I don't really want you to send me some part numbers and let me set you up. So I was like, okay. So they sent me a pro all. I'm not an official quote unquote sponsor, but they like m what I'm doing with them and I'm always promoting them. So they are going to send me a bunch of gear, which I appreciate. Going back, cause a lot of people don't winter wheel and it seems that you love winter wheeling question was you are set up because Wes is how do you stay warm but other than having the gear and wearing stuff and having the rooftop tap and also being in the jeep do you guys spend time outside do you have a an awning do you have a tent do you have an enclosure where you guys hang out and and chill and have a fire and being okay. cold being in the really cold how does that does it nice and warm like how does that work <laughs> I guess we do have an awning and if it's snowing out, generally I'd like to put it up as we, we slide the kitchen out. Otherwise it gets cold doing that. Like on our last video, we, where I forgot the propane, I put it out for a specific reason because it was so snowing, so much snow. We usually get a fire going and then, yeah, we always have a fire and we usually bring wood with us. Some of it to start as kindling and then I'll bring my chainsaw and we'll cut from usually some dead fall down and we'll get a fire going. And as far as Hanging out, we just use a couple of cam chairs that are really, I forget the brand, they're really small, compact. Mm -hmm. And maybe we set up camp chairs and eat outside. And yeah, we, 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 last year we did New Year's camping oh. and get some lobster and uh, scallops. And uh, yeah, and that was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. No, I love winter. I love winter camping. And as long as you're geared up properly. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's just it's fun. And the one thing I really like about when camping is I like some of the local spots that are really nice, but there's not enough snow. It's too bad, but I will do up on tires and because uh, not a lot of people go out in the, in the colder weather, you got less people. So it's nice. Like Chehalis, even though it's a super popular spot in the summer, almost nobody goes there in the winter. But if you, if you haven't done winter camping, you need know to. Dwayne, but Ontario... A lot of the trails are shut down in the winter time because they have a very extensive symbol trail network over there. And oh. you can still be off from town to town kind of idea, right? So it's a very extensive network and they do a very good job with it. But a lot of the trails that they go wheeling on the summer now become these snowmobile trails. Yeah, you have to really go real north to get into some trails that are still open for 4x4 four four for trucks and whatnot. Which I've done a couple of winters, done that, but not camping. But you have to go three, four hours at least just to get out to that. System. Oh, wow. But they're shut down yeah. because, yeah, the snowmobiles take over and it's their time. And then we wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of trails you can't even hit until what, May 1st or something 1st. like that, a lot of times, right? Yeah. Yeah, May 1st. So even if it's nice in March and April. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's, it's a little bit different. I guess it depends on what, what there is. And I talked to Kyle about this before, and we're talking about whether it's a natural resort or you know, what, what structures improvement long-term for whether it's an actual snowmobile or if it's a groomed trail, that sort of thing. So there's a few people that are like the Hurley. We were up there and the operator, the groomer, he said he had no problem with us going up with tracks. And you got other people with tires going up there, ruining it. And I understand that. So if I did something wrong, I'd be the first one to say it. I don't know the whole rules of it. I wouldn't purposely go on someone's groomed trail and ruin it. Wouldn't be my intention at all. Yeah. But yeah, I do agree. There's certain trails that you can't go on. I just, I don't know which ones are always are. And I've tried to do some research on certain things. And that's what we're still learning about. We go out together. Yeah. When we go with the other track jeep, he's basically 
doing some research as well. So we it, it's, it's tough. It's really hard to find. And even with me spending time working with the government on various projects, it's very hard to find out information on stuff like this, like where they're closing roads and what's legal closures and, and what's not and stuff like that. And I know that there's a lot of people that put thousands of hours into it more than I ever have, and they still don't know exactly what legal ramifications are, what trails are legally closed and legally open uh, right. in the snow season. It's, it's not an easy thing to find out for sure. Here in Ontario, we do have a trail index. The Ontario Coral Wheel uh, Association with us here, they've created a trail index. So basically we can get trail maps and basically everything like that. What trails are open? When are they open? Coordinates and things that are like bypasses and fire brick roads and all that stuff. So you guys don't have that kind of stuff? Not that I'm aware of. I, I, knew that I don't think. Actually, I, I can't comment on that. I'm not even sure. I'd be guessing. No, no they don't. And that's one thing that the Ontario Association has over the BC Association. Mm-hmm. They've both been around for years, but it's basically a matter of somebody taking on that project and spearheading it and organizing volunteers to work with it and stuff like that. There has been talk of it, but it's just a matter of people following through with it. There's there's a lot of things in BC that we have different, even uh, say in the summertime when you're going along a road and you're going through different ranges, like we have cattle ranges over here in BC and there's different ones. There's ones where it's like they own the land and there's ones that where there's other rules. And I can't remember the exact terms of the two, but you can go through on a road and for say 20 kilometers and pass through a couple different cattle ranges yes. and one you're legal to be there and the other one you're not, but you don't know because there's no signs anywhere. There's no nothing. And that's a big issue in BC. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know any, why I'm still learning as I go. So I guess yep. we'll see from there, but. Right now, I'm getting out there and I'll try to not to yep. you know, step on anybody's toes. That's, obviously, I don't want to do that. I'm sure they don't want to do that to us either. I, I think everything you've been doing has been great so far. Been loving the videos and the Instagrams and, and all that. Once again, we're talking with Wayne from Just Jeeping Adventures, YouTube and Instagram. You can check him out with his tracked Jeep JLU, I believe, Dwayne. Yes, that's right. As I mentioned earlier at the beginning, we did a interview with Dwayne back in February and a lot of things have changed since then. But if you haven't listened to the episode, I recommend going back. We talked about his Supra. We talked about his bikes. We talked about his kitchen design and his whole Jeep design. It's definitely worth going back. And you can also see a lot of that stuff on his YouTube as well. You have to use your Jeep. No. You know what? I, okay. I'm going to call it something cheesy, but I'll tell you why. And I I didn't call it this, but my favorite channel by far is 24-7-4x4. You know the one? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Australian based. And they always call their, their Jeeps, the, the, the 3030s one and another one is, I don't know, they got different names. I was going to call mine a 21 because it's a 21 Jeep, but I'm like, oh, okay, it's cheesy, but I don't really have a name. I've had a lot of people call it Stormtrooper and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff, but I don't know. I don't actually have a name. Hey, and you want to give it a nickname? I can try it. <laughs> there we go. Especially with the tracks. It's got to be a yeah. colossal name. It's yeah. got to be, it can't be pretty flower bed or It's got to be something. But <laughs> tell you something, um, speaking of tracks, so I'm, I don't really have a logo and I've had a lot of requests for t-shirts and that sort of thing. So I thought I have a logo I'm designing with uh, somebody and uh, it's, on tracks. I know it's generally not tracks all year long, but I thought, you know what? I want to do a track Jeep one. And it's going to be something not cartoonish, but kind of, but yeah, I have a name though. I don't have a name. There we go, listeners. If you guys can think of a name, throw Dwayne a, uh, a PM on Instagram or on YouTube and like uh, see. see what kind of name we can come up with. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Trisha? You got one going for him? Yeah, I was saying Tinkerbell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> Opposite of that beast. No, totally. Totally. Yeah. Like I said, lucky I don't hang up on you. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title of this episode. Tinkerbell. 
No. You typically go the track Jeep. <laughs> I will hunt you down. <laughs> I'm like, uh, it just came to me. I'm like, it's just complete opposite of the yeah. beast that is. Like, my porch? We, we, we got to behave, Trisha. I want to go camping and, and cooking with Dwayne this summer. So it's okay. we, we have to stay on his good track. Dwayne, is there anything you wanted to mention that we haven't talked about? No, not really. I, I just enjoy talking with you and, and Trisha. And I thought, you know what? I to get out there. I appreciate you taking the time for me. And I just enjoy doing this. I just want to say to anybody, as my intro says, was just get out and do it. Adventure because you have a short life and get out while you're healthy. And you don't have to have a built green Jeep. You can have a basic Jeep. You can have a basic yep. anything. Really, it doesn't have to be a Jeep, although I prefer it. But uh, <laughs> I think just you need to get out and have some fun, enjoy nature and yeah, get out, have fun. Yeah. I've always said the best vehicle is the one sitting in your driveway. So yeah, I agree hundred percent. It doesn't have to be a Jeep. There's lots of, when it comes to summertime exploration, Subaru Foresters and different vehicles like that, they don't go as hardcore as you Jeep guys do, but they're still out there exploring. So yeah, exactly. And you know what? The thing is you don't have to go deep in the bush. Some people like to just go out camping, yeah. just generally, Hey, if you going to a provincial park, I've done it myself in the last minute this decisions I had to go. And I don't really care. The yep. whole idea for me is just getting out in the outdoors and I like the road tripping and that sort of thing. That's my thing. We love road trips and the cooking aspect. Yeah, some of cooking is extreme, but uh, we also do simple stuff. But if you're out, why not just chill out? He can even have a hot dog, even cold hot dogs too. And for Thanksgiving, I camped for Thanksgiving weekend and my brother and mom and all that came up and we had gourmet hot dogs for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh you my know, God. I, I caramelized onions and I did the, you know, the, the peppers and different things like that. And yeah, we all sat around the campfire and I probably had 15 different toppings and we just had a, uh, a really great Thanksgiving dinner with just hot dog. Now, you just made me think of uh, Thanksgiving. So I don't know how many uh, videos back it is, but when we had Thanksgiving, we went to a popular spot where it was not a lot of people there, maybe 10 or so, usually it's packed at Chehalis off the lake. Mm -hmm. and we did a full on turkey. I brought my roasting oven, plugged into the Red Rock. We had a full on turkey dinner at Camp Lakeside. That is great. It. I love <laughs> turkey dinner, but I only do turkey dinner at Thanksgiving. That's enough of it for me. I'm not a huge, tur I like turkey, but once it was good. Yeah, I'm not a huge turkey fan myself either, but. But you are a pink yeah. guy. Yes. <laughs> I have to admit, since, since we last talked in February, I have been doing better with my camping cooking. So oh, I've been thinking about it more and doing more prep work to make sure I enjoy it out there. It's not always the craft dinner and, and smokies. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. You know what? People that start commenting, because I've had a few messages in the last week saying, hey man, you need to get back to doing your cooking. Because with the tracks, I'm so excited. Sometimes that we go and yeah. I've been throwing pizzas in my oven. I have a collapsible, <laughs> uh, collapsible oven, Tricia, and it's a uh, $70 one from Coleman's, I think it's called. Yeah, Coleman. And it just folds like a binder and it just opens up. It's, it is very efficient. Just sits on top of my stove and I just threw my pizza in there. And that's what I did on my last two videos. <laughs> That's, sometimes you just go and you just want to sit down and relax, right? You don't want to go full into cooking. So I, I get that for sure. So if, if I go out with Jill, she will do more cooking. But if I go out with the guy, sometimes it's, you know what? We'll do pre-cook at home and do yep. something. But we did have something really good cooking, like a rigatoni the last time we were, I forgot my propane. So we ended up not eating that. We ended up having sandwiches instead because we didn't have enough propane to, to do all the cooking. Yeah. So, <laughs> my, my bad. I do want to try a Dutch oven a little bit this summer. So Dutch oven, if you're going to do Dutch oven, Wes, if we've done a ton of it, you need to do a week for cats. We'll do it with fire, but fire, it's too hot. And then, and then it dies down. It needs to be even a little bit of heat. Okay. Actually, as a matter of fact, to know. Lodge will even tell you that on their website. If you want to be like a perfect, perfect Dutch oven cooking, you might use briquettes. That's what I use. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Once again, we are talking with Dwayne from Just Jeeping Adventures, YouTube, Instagram. Just look out for that tracked Jeep, the white JLU. 
been really enjoying your videos lately. It's been really interesting. Nice scenery. Look at those trees. They're awesome, though. And the tracks and the jeeps <laughs> and you just guys. I appreciate, going to I appreciate that. I'm still learning. I've crossed my drone probably, I don't know, 20 times. I've lost two. <laughs> Are you really a YouTuber if you haven't crashed a drone? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> No, I get you. I, Dave was up with me yesterday and he crashes. He's got the same one as Sean and he he's not really used to droning. And he's yeah. maybe a handful of times and he's crashed in the tree. Yes, it's, I actually have it on, on video <laughs> on my drone. So that's video I'm editing right now. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks for uh, joining us on such short notes again, Dwayne. We uh, really appreciate it. And I know I personally can't wait to get out the summer with you and Trisha, maybe we'll get her out one day here to the best coast. And <laughs> Trisha, why not? I know. I will. I have to. I will. Yeah. If you do, if Wes, get a hold of me and we'll head out with yep. like a little cooking and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. So awesome. Once again, thanks, uh, Dwayne. I really appreciate it. Okay. And we will chat soon. All right. Sounds good. See you guys.